Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So we, we do like a behind the scenes okay. type joint, man, just for a small group of people who are nice. uh, supporters of the social group. Podcast. Nice. And uh, do anything we left out? Anything we didn't talk about? Oh podcast? yeah. We talked about a lot. Yeah, we talked about a lot. Um, I got some specific things that content. You know, I know you do a lot on content already, yeah. so I don't want to overdo on content, but oh, we can go towards. Um, you know, just you know. Where, where, however you want to go, I'm with it. I got. Let's go for it. Right, the floor is yours. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. So, um, so this is for your inner circle people. Yes, inner circle. Hold on, let me get Jeremy's question. Okay. And then okay. we'll go there. What's up? Okay. Um, so you mentioned like five questions. Say your name too. Oh yeah, I'm um, Jeremy J Remy on uh, Instagram at J underscore Remy D D E. Um, earlier you mentioned you know five questions you asked about. When it comes to like the avatar, yeah. you mentioned like, what's your avatar's number one problem? What frustrates your avatar about that problem? What would the other three questions? Okay. What does your avatar complain about to their friends and family? What does your avatar at two in the morning, laying in the bed, looking at that ceiling fan that makes noise out, that one that we all have, that makes noise when it's, when it's on, what do they have anxiety about? What are they fearful of? And what's the cost of them staying where they're at, the real pain that they're facing, like, what do they need fixed immediately? Really good questions. For sure. Um, and I asked specifically because um, I'm also an online uh, fitness professional, mm. um, where I, I help people uh, you know, increase their health, and I, my focus is more so on like making it uh, a lifestyle concept, um, so more about like, the healthy habits and such, uh, in addition to helping people get their results. And so when it comes to stories, this being my second question, um, do you think, I, I know earlier you mentioned about like selling your story. Um, do you think it would be a good idea for me to, and this, this answer probably yes, but I may have asked anyway. Um, do you think it would be a good idea for me to just like chop up my story as I've gone on my own journey from like when I wasn't happy and like up at 2 a.m., et cetera, to like where I've gotten now? Uh, kind of like the best way to do that without it coming across as like, Hey, listen to me. Yeah, so you when you're when you're doing a video, you want to get right to the point. And like I was saying, you have to have 30 second segments of different scenarios. So for example, if you are you're helping people with lifestyle coaching, right? So if they're depressed or they're they ha they're an emotional eater, if you had that happen to you, you can you can start with that. Man, I just got dumped by my girlfriend. Man, that hoagie looking good. Man, that big pizza is looking good, man. And you know, so many times I've went into eating that piece of pizza. Have you ever had an emotional thing happen to you when you went to go eating? Listen, we all have been there. But the thing that has stopped me from doing that is X, Y, Z, right? Would be your solution. So you just went into like a situation to where you were frustrated or you had an emotional thing. It drove you to eating the wrong foods. And then you bring it back to them. Hey, are you going through this same thing? then X, Y, Z can get them out of being able to do that. So you related it back to a personal story at the moment that you were dealing with, a flaw that you've had, and now how you were, what you do to overcome that. So now it makes you human, not like just talking at them about what they should be doing. So I always try to relate it to something that, I'm, that I've went through, that I'm vulnerable about, so they feel like, okay, he understands, he's been through it, he's not just perfect. Because social media, we all, you know, we want to show the highlight reel, right? So... I try not to just show the highlight reel. I want to get vulnerable with, with my audience. And, Thank you. Uh, That's good. That's good. Major key. You got a question? Let's go. Ariel, coming up. You like a, a regular on the show. Like, I think you just know. She like a co-host. She like just a like an uh, unofficial co-host of the show. Thanks, <laughs> you Nobody's going to hear it. But people actually have said, was that your voice? Yeah, it actually was. It's weird. But, um... I'm curious to know, like, when it comes to building a fitness brand mm -hmm. that with no online presence and then going on to the social media, what, what would you say is, like, the key client, like, acquisition skill set that you teach a person to actually, like, get them to convert to a client mm -hmm. outside of, like, branding themselves? Yeah, so not having a following, even if you do have a following, you have to have outreach. You have to engage with people. You have to go and be vulnerable and actually get in people's inbox, engage within their content. So understanding who your avatar is, what their social media profiles look like, 
what type of content would be in your ideal client's social media account, and then just start engaging with their content. And then if your bio is set up correctly, showing exactly what you are, when they engage back with you, they know exactly who they're engaging with. Hey, I'm engaging with a fitness coach. I'm engaging with an online personal trainer that can help me with X, Y, Z, and just have organic conversations with people to see if there's a need for, or an opportunity for you to help them. But you're gonna have to be vulnerable and go out and talk to people on social media, you know, via DMs and comments and things like that. You can't just rely on people to come to your page no matter how big you get or how, how dope your content is because people are shy. They don't wanna make the first move, right? So you gotta go out there and be vulnerable and, and have conversations. Yep. That's strong, that's strong. Come on to the mic, come on to the mic. It's a really light interview, man. They don't be asking questions like this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my question would be, how do you actually stop from changing yourself every time something new comes on social media? Mm. So I find that sometimes um, as I grow on social media and something new comes out, I kind of like switch my flow or what mm -hmm. I'm doing. And I don't know if it's my authentic self. It's been working, but mm -hmm. I don't want to reinvent myself every time something else or somebody else comes out with a reel that looks better than mine. Or, mm -hmm. You know, I get on the morning meetup and now we're making cameras with my little video. You know, yeah. I, sometimes I feel like I'm switching it up too much. So how do you, like you talk about walking in your truth and yeah. you. So there's, there's two ways I would answer that. So things that are going viral or trendy, you still have to adopt some of those things because it is social media and it kind of dictates what's gonna get shown and not shown, but that doesn't mean you have to go outside of the flow of what you wanna communicate to people using the trendy things, so like trendy songs or things of those natures. You still can utilize those things, but still give your messaging in a way that is authentic to how you wanna communicate or how you want people to feel when they come to your brand. So I would say stay, stay locked into your core principles and what you believe but still use the, the, the things on the social media platforms, the technology and the new things that come up to get your reach out there. It's just like you're using it as a tool. Don't think like you're using, that, using it to switch up what you're doing. Take your core beliefs and use the flow of what's trendy to get your out there to people. Thank you. Yep. That's good, that's good. Okay, you had some, you had some, yeah. some, some bars for hey, me. Yeah, I got some bars, that, so. That's good, because I'm still in this. Yep. Whatever you're talking about. Yep. So it's nine points. It's called the nine point million dollar messaging sequence. So there's nine points. Dang, you, want, you ain't want to share that on the pod, bro? <laughs> God, hey, we, you, you said we are, are organically that's doing it. Fact. So, you know, we, so there's nine points, right? In every piece of content, it has to have at least one of these points. So one point is pain. The other one's problem. The third point would be either stakes or consequences. One of them is your story, selling the process. Uh, your signature process is the fifth thing. Um, case studies testimonials is the sixth thing. The seventh thing is ob objections. Any objections that you feel like your ideal client would have, you can overcome those or you can start talking about those things within your content. Your vision is eight, and then a call to action would be nine. So there's nine points that need to be all, you can have all points in one piece of content, but you have to have at least one. So if you take your avatar, you know who you're dealing with, who you're talking to, what their pain points are, what their frustrations are, what they complain about to their friends and family, what they have anxiety about, what they're embarrassed by. You know all of those things. Now we go into the nine points that have to have in the content to speak to this avatar. So for example, um, let's talk about stakes and consequences. And we know that your client is frustrated by not being able to lose this 15 pounds. They're frustrated that they've done keto, they've done Atkins, they've done intermittent fasting, and they're frustrated that they can't lose this last 15 pounds and they're about to quit. Or they have quit already, they've, they've tapped out. They say, you know what, enough is enough, I'm done, I'm, I'm just gonna be like this, right? So now in your content, you can talk about the stakes and consequences of them quitting. And you talk about the frustration. So I'm gonna give an example, I'm gonna actually do like, this would be a video. Um, I tried, five years, you guys, to really get my body to a point to where I could take my shirt off and feel comfortable at the beach. And honestly, guys, I failed. I still, when I go to the beach, I don't take my shirt off. Like, I literally quit. And it was two years that went by to where I say, you know what, I'm just gonna be like this. But you know one thing that, that made me change this? Is I, I start thinking about 
the consequences from my mentality. If every time I go to the beach with my kids, them looking at me like, Daddy, why do you always have your shirt on? Like, why don't you come into the water with us? And the, what it's going to program my kids to be. Like, not comfortable in their own skin, giving up on getting their body to where they want, not being able to put in the work. So, you know what? I said, enough is enough. I got my ass back. I got back into the gym. I went hard. I got a trainer that knew the steps that it took to get my body to where it needs. I just listened and I went all in and now I'm able to take my shirt at the, at the beach. If this is you, if you felt like you gave up, all we need to do is get with a professional, someone that can motivate you more than you can motivate yourself, someone that can give you the game more than what you know, listen, implement, and you'll be like me. And in the next six months to 12 months, you'll be able to take your shirt off at the beach. I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs> so I took, I, took, I took the frustration. I gave it back to a personal story. And now I put in the stakes and consequences. If I, if I stay like this, my kids are going to be programmed that to quit or to be programmed to wear a shirt at the beach, you know, and not be comfortable in their own skin. So I say, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. So. That's one of the things that's in the content. So now if you have your avatar right here, anytime before you go to, the, to his content camp or you're about to do content, you got your avatar right here, you got these nine points, and you say, okay, cool. Where am I gonna dig at? Am I gonna go through frustration? Am I gonna go to the pain? Am I gonna do, be complaints that they complain about to their friends and family? How can I relate that back to a personal story and use one of these points? So that's one of the examples of stakes and consequences. Let's talk about the pain. So. The pain of someone that is frustrated about their own content, the pain of them not growing their brand, the pain of actually do it, right? Uh -huh. Do it for the content creation boot camp because we're okay. gonna run an ad anyway. Okay. We're gonna run this joint. Okay, cool. So all right, so the pain, let's do it. So this so the this is for the client that has pain of not knowing how to produce content. They don't know how to use social media, they're not being able to use the apps on their phone, they're they're shy behind the camera, they just don't know what to do. So the pain of them not growing their brand, that's what they're facing, the pain of not being able to have the reach that they want, and the pain of not making the money that they want to make, all right? So, man, I'm at this nine to five job, man, this boss telling me that I can't take off work for my daughter's graduation. Man, I'm so frustrated, man. All my friends is on social media killing the game, but I just don't know how to go live on Instagram. Man, I don't want to be out there dancing to these TikTok songs, but, Man, like this $2,000 a month, I don't know how I'm going to even pay my rent. I need to do this. Listen, if this is you guys, if you're feeling that pain, if you're stuck at that nine to five and you don't know what to do, we're going to go in the next three days, you're going to come to this content creation boot camp. We're going to give you the full game plan on how you can produce social media content, how you can take what's inside you and get it out because your voice matters. Your authentic truth matters. The things that you offer to the world, we need you to come out with it. So we're going to show you that in the three days. And you're going to leave here knowing how to produce social media content, knowing how to grow your brand, and knowing how to get money in your pocket so eventually you can fire your boss. We're going to see you guys there. Dang, that's good. All right, so we're done. We're done. We're done. We got it. Because I was out there. Just mad. So we, uh... I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We took, we, how long we typically do? Patreon, like, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> that's good, man. So it's just, you, but you got to have a blueprint. You got to have an avatar there. You got to have, you have to know your avatar. That's, like, I know you talk about avatar, but, like, you really, like, bro, I was lost without that. Like, when I first got in, he was like, avatar. I'm like, what, you mean the blue movie thing? The, the, the movie right, person? Right, what the hell right. is that? What, what, what is the avatar, right? but understanding who your ideal client is because if you can understand their problems and their frustrations and their objections and what they're going through, you best have some, some applicable um, problems like they had, right? You best know how to relate to them. And if you can, it's easy because then they're going to look at you like, oh, he's just like me. Yeah, he it's just... imperative, bro. When I go like, mm -hmm. at, at the, the boot camp, I have them go through a list of one giving the avatar a name, mm -hmm. mm, nice. age, what's on their playlist, what kind of clothes do they wear, just so they can get a an intimate idea of who they're talking to. Yeah. And if you know this person that you built, you know what, you, like you said, you know what their problems are. You know mm -hmm. what, they're what they're frustrated with. You mm -hmm. know what they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to my avatar. His name is Rico. I've been talking to him <laughs> for years, bro. Rico. Years. I, yeah, I built this avatar years mm -hmm. ago. And I speak his language. And mm -hmm. here's the crazy thing. 
a lot of people, when you start teaching it, they don't want to do it because they don't want to leave out everybody else. Yep. But what they don't realize is there's a million people just mm -hmm. like your avatar. Mm -hmm. And it helps with keeping your messaging consistent. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not talking to Rico today, who's 30 years old, and I'm talking to an 18-year-old tomorrow, and then a 50-year-old, because that's three different conversations. Yeah. It just keeps my messaging in alignment. So somebody's been following me for years, they say stuff like, yo, it seems like every video you put out, you're talking right to me. I'm not really talking to you, I'm talking to Rico, but you mm -hmm. fit that profile. Mm -hmm. And if you fit that profile, you'll find that the stuff that I talk about is super consistent mm -hmm. and resonates with you every single time. Mm -hmm. That's why I like that the avatar is so important in every single workshop I do it and there's somebody that says, nah, I don't want to narrow it down to one person. Yeah. So, so, so the so. thing is, this is another thing that people have um, a problem with on social media. They feel like that they're, they're, they don't, they don't know who, the, they don't, they feel embarrassed because they feel like people ain't going to like it or they, they're not going to get the reach. So if you knew you were just talking to one person that was rocking with you, like, and every time you produce a video, you're talking to Rico, like I'm only talking to Rico and I know Rico likes me, he's gonna love me. When you do the video, it's like I'm just producing a video, a video for Rico versus a million people, you're like, man, these people ain't gonna like me, they not gonna like it, they not gonna share it, man, I can't do this video. So they get frustrated and, and, and they get scared and they get anxiety about talking to all these people. Like if you get in a room and we got all these people in here, but if I know it's only one person in here and I know this person, we good, we gonna have this conversation, I'm gonna shoot this video for you. Absolutely. So I think that's, it helps people with content when they understand, oh, I'm only talking to one person yeah. and being okay with excluding people, yeah. you know? Hey, look, man, y'all need to tap in with Van, okay? He really knows what he's doing, all right? <laughs> so um, again, man, tell, tell, tell my Patreon family how yeah. they can uh, get in touch with you. Absolutely. So Instagram at the Van Taylor one Mr. Go All In, you can't miss me. Now, I would never ask you for money or come in your inbox talking about you won something, so... That's not me. It's yeah, a lot of people. Oh, man, that's a definitely <laughs> put that yeah, it's, God, it's a lot of people out there making fake pages. I only have one page, and I would never say you want anything through a DM. And then you can also text me the word content for a free 30-day content calendar, and it would be at 949-508-1160. You can text me. I'll give you a free 30-day content calendar. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited, man. I appreciate you bringing me on. I'm humbled by the experience. I appreciate it, man. Make sure y'all follow my boy Dan Taylor. All right? We are out of here, man. Peace.